We are in Prague, Czech Republic, which is one of the safest cities there is in the world. Nothing can happen to you here. But that being said, some attacks actually did occur throughout the history, and we would like to mention them on today's video. We are on the Old Town Square, which is one of the busiest squares there is in our city and in our country. And right here, 32 years ago, on a hot summer day, an attack occurred. And it happened right here by the statue. And there's still an evidence of the attack, but we'll get to that. The year was 1990, so we just gained our freedom and democracy and our borders open to the world. So there was a lot of tourists on this square, but there was also an attacker. What he did is he planted a bomb in this statue, a tube bomb that was set to a certain time to explode, which happened. Now, the explosion didn't happen as he intended it to happen, so it didn't kill anyone and it didn't harm as many people as he was hoping for. But 18 people were harmed, one seriously injured. The story obviously appeared on the front pages of the newspapers and everybody was discussing what was the motive of this crime. Well, to this day, they didn't catch the attacker, nor they know what the motive was. Now, they are speculating that it may have to do something with the just gained democracy because it happened only two weeks before our first democratic elections. So maybe whoever planted the bomb wanted to uh, protest against the current regime and was hoping for the previous one, but we'll never know. Now I said that there's actually an evidence of the attack here on the square, and the evidence is this. Back in the days, you were actually able to sit on these steps by the statue. But when the attack happened, the city decided to close the statue, put this little fence here and these uh, plants, so nobody can go up there. And this happened just after the attack in 1990. And since then, the statue was never open. So they put benches here so you can sit on those, but nobody can go to the statue. Now back to the attacker, uh, not only he was not caught, but he actually committed another attack only two months later at the swimming place uh, in Prague. Once again, hot summer day, a lot of people, he planted a bomb that exploded. They know it was the same attacker because the bomb had a similar design or was built the same way, but the attacker got away. And uh, again, nobody was killed, nobody died, but 18 people were injured. Now this act, this attack was actually classified as a terrorist attack, uh, but the next one we'll talk about was an attempt murder, and it happened just around the corner. Some tourists nicknamed this street the Open Shopping Mall. Very busy, lots of people, and lots of shops. But also, back in the days, there used to be a casino here on the corner, and that's where the attack happened. An attacker was waiting here in the phone booth and he was aiming for the owner of the casino, waiting here the entire day with a grenade in his pocket. The minute the owner of the casino got out with his two bodyguards, they entered an armored Jeep that they sat in. At that moment, the attacker took the grenade and threw it against the Jeep. He didn't break any window, it actually bounced off the car and landed right next to it. And that minute, that second, it exploded. Since the car was armored, nothing happened to the people inside the car. But once again, I guess it's the unlucky number of Prague, 18 people were hurt around in the area. The attacker immediately ran away and actually did get away. Just like the previous attack, it was a hot summer day of the 1st of August, not the 90s. This happened in 2004. The Ministry of Internal Affairs immediately showed up at the scene to investigate what was going on. And he classified the act not as a terrorist attack because a single person was the target. Now the cops pulled the car to the nearby police station to later investigate it. And as I said, they didn't catch the, the attacker. They didn't got him, but they eventually did. Two months later, they found him in Israel. He was brought later back to Czech Republic where he was sentenced to five years in prison. Uh, the punishment was this low because nobody was seriously injured during this attack. 
And now I was 16, 17 back then, and I could vividly remember this news on uh, the TV and on the radio and the newspaper, and it was a big deal. It was like an attack with a grenade in downtown Prague. That was something unheard of. Now let me calm you down. Since then, no attacks, no bombs, no grenades in Prague, but a crazy person did something absolutely crazy back at the old town square. So let's go there again. Now the following story is crazy, but it actually did happen right here on the square pretty recently, 2016. A group of maniacs dressed up as soldiers actually pulled into the square on a big Humvee truck. Uh, they had guns, they had machine guns in their arms and they started to shoot up into the sky. Now the bullets were blanks or there were some airsoft guns, but you can probably imagine what they caused among the tourists that were here. An absolute panic and chaos. Now there are videos from the nearby restaurants where the tourists started running away because they thought it was an ongoing terrorist attack. It was not. It was just a show of some maniacs who were actually, I kid you not, protesting for democracy. Now going through the articles uh, that refer to the situation uh, back then, I actually found a Facebook status of our friend who used to work in a hotel here. His name is Tomasz and he was witness to the situation where tens and dozens of tourists were running into his hotel screaming, crying and saying that there's a terrorist attack on the square. And he's describing how he was not sure what to do. He was scared, people were hiding, they were running up the stairs, they were hiding in the elevators and so on. So absolute madness. Now you may wonder what happens if you fake a terrorist attack with a serious chaos causing to the city. Well, the person who did that after this happened, he went to the nearby stands and just ordered a beer and stood there. And uh, if you wonder if they were punished by the law, yes, they were. The guy who drove the Humvee onto the square got a parking ticket. This really happened. I'm not making this up. It's ridiculous. I guess that being said, that's how safe Prague is. We have to fake attacks and we don't even punish the people for doing that. Luckily, this person is out of the picture and I hope he will never ever or anyone else do this again. Now, these were the attacks. And this is where the video breaks because we're gonna talk about how our city is preventing future attacks from happening. And for that, we need to go on the ground. Now, as you can imagine, the largest attacks that ever happened worldwide were September 11th attacks in the United States of America. And we did react to those as well in the Czech Republic. And we got rid of the trash cans all around the Prague subway. And they were gone for nine years. But then the city was like, well, now there's garbage everywhere in the subway. We got to bring back the trash cans. So they did. So now we have these and you can tell that they're quite large uh, because they are anti-terrorist garbage cans. This little baby weighs half a ton and it has two steel plates and it's fancy. It's from Israel and one piece was 3,000 euros to buy. So the city bought them for the big stations where there's a lot of people. There's six of them at one station and they spent more than 8 million crowns acquiring these trash cans. Now, if you think that that's quite expensive, well, the city did have a choice to buy cheaper trash cans that you could see through and use bags that you could see through so you could tell if somebody puts inside something suspicious. Those trash cans would only go for around 150 euros, but the city was like, nope, we want this half a ton baby. So we got them. And I don't think anybody remembers the story of this awesome trash can that is preventing us from future attacks. Now, there's one more thing in the Prague Metro that will save you from an attack, and it's these mystery boxes. Uh, while I was doing research for this video, I actually found out that these are chemical detectors. So if there's like a gas attack in the Prague Metro, this thing will apparently sense it, and I'm not really sure what it will do afterwards. Maybe somebody will jump out and tell you, uh, but that's what they're for. Uh, and you'll see them at the busy Prague Metro stations.
I'm pretty sure that most of us have a vivid memory of the attacks that occurred in Europe when crazy people, terrorists, were attacking different markets uh, on the squares where they would drive a car or a truck into a crowd. And obviously cities had to react. And Prague didn't stay behind, so they built these barriers on the old town square. So when there's a market, when there's a lot of people, you want to protect the square. Uh, in this case, uh, and I don't want to ridicule yeah, where was I? I don't want to ridicule uh, the decision of the city to protect the square, but if you put a barricade somewhere, you shouldn't leave a gap in it so a car or a truck, as we just saw, can go through. And not only that, the barricades are only placed at one entrance of the square. I mean, there's other entrances to the square where you can easily drive uh, and potentially enter the square and harm people. Uh, so. Once again, I'm happy the city tries to um, protect its citizens and the visitors, but not sure if this was the smartest move of them all. I hope that with what you saw today, you could tell that Prague is really extremely safe city. And I hope that fear will not overcome the joy that we have from our city. And I hope the city will not barricade every square that there is. The only crime that happens in Prague is usually theft and usually it's involved with cars, somebody breaking into a car and it definitely does not happen in the city center, usually on the outskirts. Uh, and also if you are watching our videos, uh, you may get the feeling that there is crime happening every day on every corner. No, it is not. Of course, we cherry pick the situations and we look for them with our camera. So no need to worry about anything when you come here, especially if you watch The Honest Guy Show because you'll be prepared. Let me know if you like this trip to the past of our crimes that happened here in Prague. You can do that in the comments below. While you're down there, you can subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next week, next Sunday. Honza behind the camera, Yannick in front of it, the Honest Guides. At the end of every episode of The Honest Guide, we try to teach you our language, which is Czech. And this time it will be the word attack, how to say attack, uh, which in Czech it's útok. Útok is attack, útok, attack.